Friggin' what up, dude? Um, Strider Wilson, I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Night. Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank. I'm your host, Strider Wilson, dude. We got Aaron going beast mode on the sticks, dude. What up, Aaron, dude? What up? And I'm freaking posted up right now, dude. Dude, you've been going for runs? Training for this tough mutter that I'm doing with Bertolina, the ledge of ATC himself, dude. 12 miles, tons of obstacles. One of them's electrocution. I'm out on that. I'm skipping it, dude. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not doing that <laughs> one. But I'm sore. And... You know, and I think part of this soreness, and the reason I mention it, I think you get into, as a kid, you love machinery. We love machines. There's just something about it. Planes, cars, you know, you have little matchbox cars, tanks. We love that type of stuff. It's just awesome. Stuff that goes fast and shit. We like that. And as I get older, but I, but then you fade away from it. And when it came to athletics and competition, I was more of a football, basketball guy, even baseball. I'll even take a little bit of baseball. Yeah, no. You know, hey, opening day. We're recording right now on opening day, MLB. Well, it's just the the true the that, Soul series Soul in Korea. True, which I didn't see the spoilers. I guess it broadcasted at like three a.m. here in L.A. Uh, so. Only if you have a. Uh, Dodgers sports net or whatever the shit it's bullshit how they get you now yeah. it's bullshit how they get you uh, but that's not my main complaint and I don't want to just be bitching and moaning no one likes a moaner okay unless you know <laughs> you're getting down to business with the dank ass wife or something like that then you know we can talk okay? oh yeah <laughs> daddy oh but I'm sore dude and I think that soreness has made it less relatable for me to be like, you know what? I can relate to what these athletes are doing on the field, running and jumping. And of course, I don't do it anywhere at the level they are. But when I was younger, I could convince myself, yeah, I can run and jump like that. Or at least it was tangible to when I had played that game. Now, I'm getting more into motorsports, you know, because the body's not fast, but then you can get into a car and maybe you can do that. But then again, they say your hand-eye coordination goes down. So F1, no, but NASCAR, maybe, but you still need that body strength in there. So I'm just talking myself out of everything. But what I am getting into is motorsports. I went to the Daytona 500. It was rained out. Didn't get to see one car go around the track. Oh. But I did get to walk on the track, which was sick. Cool. And dude. I've, I've taken the tour, so I've driven around it in a you know cart or whatever. I was supposed to do that too. But they were, because it was rain, they canceled that. I was actually going to take a ride around the track in like a pace car. Oh, nice. <laughs> Would have been sick. And dude, it has to go super fast because those embankments yeah. on the turns. Dude, it's, it's crazy it's, how, it's like 11 degrees or something. It, like It's like almost the side of a building. Like it's like not yeah. vertical, obviously, forget, but forget, like. Yeah, it's not, it's an 11. It's something crazy. But to make, because they maintain speed. I mean, they're going around the track like at 198 miles per hour pretty much the whole time. Yeah. And they roll the start. It's like 160 on the curves and 190 in the straights. Yeah. Like that, yeah. And then they can get like three, four wide sometimes. Hoo wait. You know, it's 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 pretty cool, man. And the power, I did hear them start one engine um, down in pit row. And dude, it would have been very nice. I think you pop a boner when you're at a NASCAR event. When all those engines start, I'm pretty sure all the dudes in the grandstand have boners. Yeah. You know? And it all faces the same way. It's massive. It is. You go to a football stadium, you're like, whoa, this is big. Go to Daytona, baby. That grandstand is the biggest thing like I've ever seen. And I've seen Joe Marucci's penis. Yeah. It's actually a lie. I haven't seen this penis. But this grandstand is massive, dude. They say Talladega is the biggest and the baddest. But that's why I'm enamored right now. And that inspired this episode. My bodily soreness, my aging, and you know this sort of, I don't know what you want to call it. Maybe it's masculine, but maybe it's actually just human. Because there's ladies out there. Although I will say, I was down there on the infield and people were joking around. It's the biggest sausage fest in the world. It's just a bunch of dudes just grilling and hanging out. And it's a great vibe. It's all camaraderie. Like maybe one or two chicks, a couple of nice, couple of wives hanging out, good stuff. But I mean, let's be honest. Um, so I sort of have this theme 
that I want to talk about today, which is this emerging of man and machine and this, this will to strive, drive, survive, and win, baby. And it's a beautiful thing. And I'm going to say what race requires that of the driver and the machine and the track and just the history of it the most. That's sort of a loose criterion for what is today a motorsport dank off. Oh, Buckle up. Oh. Pun intended. Buckle up. Whoa. Because it's coming, baby. It's coming. Whoa. We've got six. I couldn't narrow it down. Usually I do five for a dank off. I had to do six tracks, circuits, rallies, races. Yeah. And then at the end, we're going to say which one is the best. Okay? We're going to do that. At the end of this, I'm going to go through them in kind of no particular order here. I only say kind of because I'm going to start, spoiler alert, with Daytona 500 because that's where I recently was. But other than that, if there's no particular order. We're just going to go through them. Then at the end, we'll, de we'll delineate or delegate. What's the word? I always mess it up. Delineate. Thank you. We're going to fucking delineate and declare the dankest. The mm hmm Yeah. The dankest. But before we do that, I've got a quick announcement. April 1st, two nights. Oh, shit. Sorry. There you go. That's okay because I messed up. I already said two <laughs> nights and it should be one night, two shows. So that's okay. All right. So here we go, baby. Here it is. April 1st, one night, two shows. If you're in Los Angeles, California, get your buns down there. Paperback Brewery in Glendale. Free beer. All you got to do is snag a ticket. It's 30 bones. I know that sounds steep. But if you go to a, a show at a comedy club, you're already spending 25 bucks plus a two-drink minimum. You're getting free beer at my special, baby. Cruise on out. Chad's going to be there. Jay Titty's directing. It's going to be sick. It's going to be once-in-a-lifetime experience. I'll be there. Aaron's there. Let's go. He doesn't even drink beer, so he'll give you his. Yeah. It's actually unlimited free beer, so maybe you want to get there a little early. So figure it out. Get down there. Tickets are going to be in the link for this show. They're also on Instagram. I'll be spreading it like wildfire. All right. Let's get into the race. Let's get into our dank off. Starting with the Daytona 500, baby. Okay. Quick fact. Didn't know this. If you don't know anything about motorsports. It's 500 miles. The track's 2.5 miles, yeah. so it's 250 laps. Yeah, yeah. Let's clear that up. I didn't know that till I went there. Yeah, anytime it's a, it's a, the number is the miles. Yeah. So Daytona Beach is basically the birthplace of NASCAR. Started there in the 60s. This guy, um, shit, I wrote down his name. It'll come up later in the notes. Jeff um, NASCAR. Yeah, Jeff NASCAR. No, that's not him. <laughs> It's North American Association of Stock Car Racing. Let's go. I believe. And each car has different specs. Stock cars are badass. I mean, sure, you want to give people a gruff. Oh, you're just making left-hand turns the whole time. Dude, it's hard, man. You got to be in there. You're switching gears. And rubbing is racing, baby. You're in. You're swapping paint. NASCAR, you can bang a little bit. Yeah. You know, F1, you're not doing that. But NASCAR, you're banging. Um, yeah, you're doing. I mean, you're on that embankment, and you got to keep it in position, like not wobble. Yeah, at all, like, whew. dude, it's hard, man. Yeah. And you, you take strength. Forearms, it takes yeah. focus, big time forearm strength, calf and forearm strength. I love that. Um, you know, infamously, 2001, where Dale Earnhardt, it's where he passed, turned three. Yeah, wasn't wearing the um, Haas device. I think they call it. Well, they didn't have it back then. Oh, yeah. It wasn't even around. It was invented after that. Okay, this was, they say necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. Yeah, that like keeps the neck stable. Yeah, um, seatbelt may have snapped as well. Yep. Uh, or he wasn't um, wearing it properly. There's been some debate. Really, that was tough, but a lot of, so a lot of history at this track, good and bad. Um, so Daytona National Speed, it began, it began in 1902, it was way back in the day. Um, I mean, basically, ever since there was cars, people were racing them. You know, it's Hell just yeah. it's just instincts. Hell yeah. Um, you've got one of the it was one of the biggest tracks of its time when they built it in 1979. Um, it used to be like the Super Bowl of NASCAR, and now it sort of kicks off the season. I think they do say Talladega is the biggest and the baddest, but just because the history of the race, it's the birthplace of NASCAR. The track is massive. It is 
Um, it has unbelievable embankments. It was confusing when they called it the Super Bowl of NASCAR because it was like, well, that's if the if the championship game is it the first game of the season. Exactly, it doesn't Which really make sense. Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't make sense. It's just, it's just huge, um, unbelievably massive, fucking badass. It's got, um, let's see. It used to have be. Uh, it also used to be home to motorcycle racing. Um, they do some of that now, Class C motorcycles. Um, they do the championship there, but really, what it is is it it's the race that in the track that put NASCAR on the map. So it's huge for that reason. Okay, Daytona 500. Keep that in the back of your minds as you listen. Decide which one's the most badass. And speaking of badass, this next race, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's called the Isle of Man. First held in 1907 with cars. Um, it was sort of this highway act of 1904. Um, there was a previous act by British Parliament. Isle of Man is an island offside, off the, you know, the big isle there in, in Britain across the pond. And basically car races were done on roadways. And then finally Parliament was like, look, these are too dangerous. People are getting hurt. Like if you've seen that, that, um, Ford versus not Ford versus Ferrari. That's a great ass movie, but the um, Ferrari movie with uh, my boy Adam Driver. By the way, Aaron, I'm coming around on Adam Driver. Cool, cool. All right, I had to get out of my own way I, with. I've met one. him. Was he cool? He seemed cool. See, that's what I mean. He seems cool. He's a great actor. He crushes it and everything. He brings it. He's, He's a little serious. He's serious at first, but yeah. I think he he opens up. Yeah, and you know, maybe he has to have that with people he's meeting. Maybe that's a famous guy stuff you got to do. Yeah. Be, keep everyone a little bit distant. Can't make eye contact. But he's great in the Ferrari movie. I don't necessarily know if I love the movie, even though it's my boy, Michael Mann. And they're doing a race called the um, Mia Miglia, like the Thousand Mile or whatever. And uh, tragic stuff happens on that. So that was basically happening in um, Britain. And they go, fuck this. Um, you know, we're not going to sanction as many races. Um, but then these these dudes get together. This guy, they, they create what's called a Sneffel, Sneffel Mountain Course um, in 1911. And um, largely today, it's the same course, a few um, different elements to it now. But what makes it psychotic is that it is a road course, sort of a mountainous road course, Mm -hmm. on motorcycles where the average lap time, I think when it started what in the 1920s was about 55.62 miles per hour, which is fast. It's fast. Yeah. It's now- not, not a lap time, that's speed, but yeah. Yeah, average speed. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. I'm a dumbass. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Average speed. 55. And that would win you the race. That's, I mean, on a motorcycle, that still feels cool. Yeah, 100%. You got what? That's blowing your wind back. It's blowing your hair back in the wind. Yeah. Nowadays, um, you got this um, this guy. I think his name is. Um, well, we don't even need to get into racers. Let's keep racers out of it. Um, you have guys bombing down this mountain circuit at a speed of one hundred thirty five point four five two miles Christ. per hour. That's. On road Your bikes. average lap time. And that's not one of these tracks that you see where dudes dip the motorcycle and they kind of like scrape their knee. And if they wipe out, they slide forever in their leather. And, yeah. you know, and sometimes you're like, how did that guy live? And they'll like stand up and walk after it. Yeah. You know, and they sort of train for that stuff. In this race, if you crash, you die. You are guaranteed, you are guaranteed dead. Jeez. You go into a house or a wall or a tree. Because that's what you're racing by. And people stand next to the track. Ugh. Dude, it's psychotic. So anyone could run into you if they slip on gravel or anything like that, hit a little, you know, pothole or anything. And, you know, they go and make sure that they walk the track and all that type of stuff. But you don't know. Some squirrel comes running in front of you. Wow. It doesn't matter. And this is on this is on road bikes? This like, is on, uh, like, crotch rockets. Yeah, crotch rockets. Yeah. These are crotch rockets. Okay. And wow. these... These guys are bombing down there and they say, you know, I think they, it's like guaranteed every year, like one or two dudes dies doing this race. Ugh. It's, it's insane. Wow. Um, so the Isle of Man 
is on here because it is the most psycho. It's also historic. You know, it's over 100 years old. Yeah. Um, you know, it's – and it's just one of the most um, gnarly races that you can do. And remember I said this criterion of drive, survive, strive, your will to win. Yeah. And, you know, man versus machine really have to come together here. Uh, which takes us to our next type of race. Do you know race. how long a race that is or how long a lap is? That is, let's see here. It's not super. It's a 38-mile suicidal crusade to secure the checkered flag. That's it. It's a 38-mile from start to finish. So it's, so it's not one like, lap around the island. Yeah, it's like wow. basically one ra- lap around the island. That's crazy. Yeah. Deadliest race on the planet. It's claimed 200 lives since its inception. Wow. Um, yeah, you wouldn't want to do two laps of that. You'd be like, no, you get you. That's the thing. You enough. do it once, you survive, and you do it the fastest. Yeah. So it's that's it's a rally race in that regard. The next one is the Dakar or maybe Dakar, D A K A R rally race. Um, a rally race is they say the purest and oldest form of of motorsport. Um, it's basically held on public and private roads, kind of, kind of just like we talked about with the Isle of Man, um, and it's from it's a point to point format. So instead of c- completing laps like you do in NASCAR, you go or Formula One, you go point to point. Um, you have it's basically an ultimate test of motorsport because these rally races take course over like two weeks, and you get from like checkpoint to checkpoint. Yeah. Then there's like one rest day in it. And this rally race in Descartes, it's like off-roading, you're on a motorcycle. Um, you can also do it in cars. It's mixed It's mixed um, machinery. Oh, wow. Yeah. You just take kind of take off at different times. Um, but the motorcycle is the most bas- badass way to do it. Sure. Um, it's the purest form of ultimate motor racing, durability, the toll it takes. It's, it also takes map. You have to be able to use maps and, and navigate yourself in these type of races. Um it took place in, in Saudi Arabia this year in January. Um, originally, though, going back, um, someone would get lost or not make it. Uh, Baja is another big one in Mexico. It, yeah. Like That's another Baja rally is another big one. Yeah, yeah. But Dakar is, is more gnarly, they say. Um, let's see. It, this adventure began, it's kind of an interesting history here. In 1977, this guy, Thierry Sabine, he gets lost on his motorbike in the Libyan desert um, during an Abdijan Nice rally race. Um, and he gets saved from the sands um, and returns to France. And he was just like, dude, he was stoked. He gets back. He's like, dude, this is a beautiful landscape. We got to go back here. He's like, I was lost, but I found my way out. He's like, the boys need to get together and do this. So, He'd, um, you know, g- uh, get some, raises some capital and, and comes up with a route starting in Europe, continuing to Algiers, crossing the Agadez or whatever the hell that is, probably some desert, before eventually finishing at Dakar. Um, and he, the motto for this and his inspiration for it is, and I quote him saying, a challenge for those who go, a challenge for those who go, a dream for those who stay behind. It's what it is. So courtesy of his um, great conviction, he uh, did this Paris to Dakar. That was the um, adventure and open to all riders and basically just super badass. It's been going on for 30 years. Um, he tragically passed away in a helicopter accident one of the oh. years, like in the 80s. Yeah, like things. scouting and stuff. I know. But um, still goes on to today. It's like a two-week race. Took place all in Saudi Arabia this year. They kind of mix it up now and like... Yeah, it doesn't end in Dakar. Yeah. Um, but still... Although when you finish, they douse you in Dakar. Fuck yeah. Do you get doused, bro? What, what's Dakar? Dragons? Dakar Noir? Cologne? <laughs> the cologne that everyone wore in high school? <laughs> yeah. I was all about that Aguadigio, bro. Oh. Uh, or that Abercrombie Wood. Uh, I was a CK1 guy or Cool Water. It's legit. Only high schoolers wear cologne. Do you still wear cologne? No. Yeah, no. No more cologne. Okay. We've got Daytona. We've got Isle of Man. We've got the Dakar Rally. Coming up next, you've heard of it, the Monaco Grand Prix. 
Ooh, yeah, yeah. This is the sexiest of races. Sure. This is a sexy race. You know, it's probably the one that like is taking place in the background of a James Bond sequence or something like that, you know? Yeah, it's in uh, Iron Man 2. It's in, there you go. It's in a movie. It's very sexy. It's prestige. In the track, in the course itself, Formula One drivers say demands the most from drivers. Um, it demands the most skill and precision. While in, they say, while albeit you may not reach the highest speeds as you do on other courses, you're still reaching plenty of speed. But you are going through the city, bending, turning. It demands the most of the car and driver. And it's like, and they say, and you love a bend. Uh, you got, you know, I love a bend, baby. I love all sorts of bends, baby. I love a bend almost as much as I love a dart, baby. You better believe that. And it's, it's. The drivers say it's a, a win there is worth two wins anywhere else. Wow. So fucking badass. Um, it's the creme de la creme of Formula One. If you win there, you're world class. You almost have to talk about it in this sort of nondescript European accent. I could be from anywhere, just not here yeah. when I speak of Formula One. You go there, you park your yacht. You know, you have women wearing alligator skin bikinis. You're sitting there in your Speedo, wearing your gold chain necklace, watching the cars zip by as you drink Champ Pagne on your yacht. And it's just grand. It's grand. It's fucking badass. Yeah. Um, so, interesting race history, dude. It goes back, you know, before World War II, took a break during World War II. During World War II, I should hope so. Afterwards, you had this guy, um, this driver, William Grover Williams, classic name. He, Actually, uh, little I mean, little known fact: um, during World War II, uh, Patton won this. Yes, George S. Patton. Won. Yes, he did in a tank. Yeah, that's right. It's not in the movie. They cut that scene for time, but it is true. He did. This the um, first race, not the first race after World War II, but but during World War II, some sick ass shit was going by. Um, you had like uh, special operations and executives inside of France. Um, they were like um, basically finding and discovering Nazis um, that would hang out afterwards at the race, and um, then extradite them. So it was pretty badass, dude. Yeah, um, they can't stay away. But exactly, dude. They were, just, were too drawn to it. Um, a lot of great history, a lot of all-time winners there. It is. Let's see. It also has exceptions because it's a, like so historic that it doesn't exactly meet all of the demand for Formula One tracks now, like safety standards and everything. But because it is Monaco, they just go, "Look, we're still going to race Monaco." You know, even yeah. though it's not up to standard, we're still going to fucking do it. Um, okay. Then we've got the next one. Indianapolis 500. Okay. Okay. This one, they call the granddaddy of them all. You got to like that. You have your specific indie style specs of a car. Um it goes around, like we said, pop quiz. If it's 500 miles, it's 2.5 mile circuit. Speed's approaching, they say, 230 miles per hour in the straights at the Indy wow. 500. So it's faster than stock cars. Um, drivers, what's cool about this race too, is drivers who compete, say, in Formula One or NASCAR, not just Indy, they'll drive an Indy car just to be in this. They just want to put it on their belt, you know, yeah. They'll train a little bit and be like, look, I want to just, if you get an Indy 500 win, I mean, it's, it's iconic as a driver. Um, so the Europeans come and do it. Um, yeah, it is, it is different from Formula One. It's different. In that Formula One, you can spend as much as you want on your car. Your car can be anything. Indy car is all pretty standard. It has to be standard, which you, which is nice. That's what's messed up about Formula One. It's like three different tiers of a race going on. Mm -hmm. In Indy 500, it's just, it's drivers basically all in the same exact type of car and spec and getting after it. Same with like NASCAR. I mean, I don't know if they can spend more per race team, but, and there are specs in Formula One, but these are like the exact same type of cars. Um, 
you've got huge, huge nine degree embankments here. I think it's 11 at um, Daytona, like you said. So fat embankments. You got a, your Indy cars are pretty awesome looking. It's kind of one of my favorite looking type of car. It's got a um, open wheel, low slung, open cockpit chassis, rear mounted high performance engine, um, having a displacement of 8.83, 183.6 cubic inches. Um, drivers must first qualify in a four lap time trial. So this is something to note for racing too. They'll also take you out of the race. They'll do this in NASCAR and they'll do it in Indy and on circuits. If you aren't keeping pace, you're dangerous. Yeah. You know, it's like Maverick. Look, you're dangerous out there. When Iceman bites at him, weird choice as an actor, but effective. You will be removed from the race. So you need to be able to drive at a certain level. Otherwise, you ain't qualifying, baby. Yeah. Um, and the race starts three wide, which is badass. I had a, f- a family friend growing up, Roberto Guerrero. He raced in a Colombian racer. He, uh, his, his kids, nice kids, went to uh, school with me. And um, he raced in the Indy 500, I think a few times. I think one time he, he wiped out as well. Um, so it's badass. And what's I think what's particularly cool about this is just the fact that um, you have so many different racers from different fields of racing coming to win in this format. So it's awesome. And, you know, if you hit the wall, pretty much every race, someone's going to hit the wall, baby, at about 230 miles per hour. So look out. All right. Indy 500, granddaddy of them all. And then finally, this is in no particular order. Remember, 24 hours of Le Mans. This is the race that they're doing in Ford versus Ferrari. Good ass movie. Um, Le Mans, little town in France. Um, it's been going on since 1923. So it's about 100 years old now, which I think is awesome. Makes it historic. Um, they say this is the least changed of all the races. Um, Le Mans is a circuit. This is not a rally. It is a 8.5 mile circuit, 13.6 kilometers if you're listening across the pond. Um, it's run in June. So and maybe that's on purpose. Maybe it's for weather, but also, you know, we're talking about just how days work and you get more sunlight. So you're not racing in the dark as long, which is a little bit safer. That needless to say, this is still a very dangerous race. Um, and this you'll run in teams. So what I like about it is it's teamwork, it's man, it's machine, it's general, if they're sharing the same car, different drivers all working together. And what's also, I didn't even know about this, the Le Mans is, the winner is the most distance traveled. So it's not who like finishes first or crosses it first. So like if you have to stop and work on your car, you're starting to lose. It's who can travel, who can go the farthest, the fastest in a 24-hour period on this pretty gnarly ass track. That's what this race is about. So it's, uh, I think that's pretty fucking cool about it. And what is also cool about it is it first started and it was a road course. So it was to test cars. And I believe it's still this way. Street legal cars, the highest performing like street legal car. So if you're a dude and you want something relatable, kind of like I was saying, this is where you would go, you know, the Ford GT or your Bugattis, your Ferrari GTOs, um, Toro Rossi's or whatever the hell they're called. Um, you would put them out on this track and see how they do. So it was also, you know, it's good for marketing, but also it's like, you know, it's, clearly professional drivers doing at the highest level possible but and multiple drivers multiple yeah yeah yeah. which i like that so okay we've run down a brief history of these races also just important now you have something to talk to your girlfriend's dad about now okay yeah you know these races you kind of know where they take place and now maybe you'll have an opinion on which one's the best so just to recap we did it we did it in order of this daytona 500 Isle of Man, Dakar Rally, Monaco Grand Prix, Indy 500, 24 Hours, Le Mans. So let's rank. Oof, it's tough. Let's dank, baby. 
Yeah. It's tough. That's a great list. I know. They're all badass races. Yeah. I had to do six. Let's go number six. Let's go in reverse order. Okay. So finishing sixth for me is even though it's a badass thing to do, I'm going to go with the Dakar rally here because like I mentioned, I want that relatability factor, but I do think it does take a lot to drive and and literally survive on that out there and using a map and finding your way. But it seems like a cool, it, and it's a cool adventure. And if you if you finish, that's a feat on its own. Yeah. But I want with my race it to be more tangible and watchable, you know. Like, a, and I feel like it'd be cooler done on a horse, like in Hidalgo. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty sick ass. I was movie. thinking that, like a camel versus motorcycle. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, it almost feels like that, which I guess is cool because it transitions something that's historic. You would do this race on a horse. Which, by the way, what a great pull by me right there, Hidalgo. I haven't thought of that movie in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good ass movie with my boy Vigo Mortensen. There you go. Let's go. Good movie, dude. Um. So I'm gonna go with that. I mean, Aaron, where do you where do you stand with that? Yeah, I mean, it would be impossible to watch it on TV. Um, yeah. Obviously, as a as a racer in it, it would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And to win it or to even finish, like you said. Cause it's long, it's arduous. Yep. I, I the fact that motorcycles can also be in it as well as cars, like that's crazy to me. It's more common motorcycles. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah it's I, crazy. I would think so because they're yeah more versatile and can get more places. But mm-hmm. for distance, that's hard. Like that's hard on a, on a body. Oh, it is. It is very hard on the body, which maybe n- means it needs more respect. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it might. Well. I was going to disagree with you. Uh, yeah. For me, as 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 big a tradition as it is, I think Daytona is is number six. I was going to put that at five. Daytona was my number five. Okay. Because it's not even the biggest and the baddest anymore. Talladega is a bigger, badder track. Yeah. Um, but Daytona just has that history. Sure. Which is nice. But um, it's the only track I've been to. Yes, yeah, the only track I've been to too. Um. So yeah. I, I I hear you. What okay? So then, what's your um, five? Five. I think I'm gonna go Monte Carlo. Oh, Monaco. I'm sorry, Monaco. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Monte Carlo. Why did that come out? Mm, probably because we're talking about James Bond. You know, there's some scene in Monte Carlo from James. Yeah. Bond. Well, and NASCAR drivers, like NASCAR cars used to be Monte Carlos. Yep. And they probably um, drivers go to the casino in Monte Carlo after they win. Yeah. You know. Um, okay. I respect that. I like Monaco. Like it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. But in terms of like how it's kind badass of a scene. it is. It's yeah. kind of a scene. Yeah. In terms of badassery, I don't think it's as badass as. You're talking me into putting that at number four. I'm going to go Monaco Grand Prix. Okay. What's your number four? My number four, what's left? What is left is Isle of Man. Uh-huh. Indy 500. Uh-huh. Um, the Le Mans 24 hour. Le Mans and Dakar, right? And Dakar for you. Yeah. Dakar's gone for me. I'm going Indy 500. Wow. I mean, the only reason it's higher than Daytona is the speeds. Speeds, exactly. And the. the and the open, open. I agree. Your head's there. Your, yep. head's your head is out. out. The car looks cooler. It's a cooler looking thing. They race every Memorial Day. Yeah. And that you get drivers from all over the world coming there. It is cooler. Yeah. That's that's going to be my number three. Yeah, it's a but top three. Again, it is an oval. It's You're not just that going around, but you know what? It's good. You know that that is a style of racing that's huge. I mean, that you have to have that. I think in your top three is that style. In my top three, I want different styles of racing. So that's my. I think the Indy 500 is the best, like circuit. Yeah. One, even though I have one more circuit one coming up, but it's kind of combined both. I get it to have my cake and eat it too. Sure. Okay. So what's your number three? Number three is going to be. What you have left is you have Isle of Man, you yeah. have Le Mans, and you have Dakar. I'm doing Le Mans. Whoa. 
that's kind of a road course, right? It's road course. It has some straightaways. It's a road circuit. It's a eight yeah. and a half mile circuit that, yeah, it has yeah. straightaways. It has turns. Yeah, that makes it cooler. And not just left-hand turns. That makes it cooler than all the rest mm-hmm. of the circuits. Is it because you But 24 swear? hours is hard. 24 yeah. hours is hard, but you don't do it. Not one driver does yeah. it all. Yeah, you do four hours or whatever time. But that's still a lot of driving. It's a ton of driving. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Um, yeah. Okay, I respect that. Okay, my number two is going to be um, the Isle of Man. It's a rally race. It's point to point. It's it's survival. It's badass. It's on a motorcycle. It's about the craziest thing you can do on a mach- on a ground built for speed machine. Um, it, but it all it almost might just be too crazy to make it number one for me. So. Yeah. But it is so gnarly. It's something that I think if you went and saw, your mind would be blown. It's something that I would never stand next to the track and watch. Yeah, yeah. It's something I got to YouTube after this. E- exactly. You YouTube it. Yeah, I've YouTube. It's it's insane. Don't watch the crashes because it's, it's crazy. Yeah. But YouTube, like the cars zipping by, uh, the, excuse me, the motorcycle zipping by. Yeah. It's mind boggling how fast they go. Okay, what's your number two? I think I, I will have that as well. The Isle of Man. Okay, so then my number because one because I don't really yeah. love a road a road bike. Yeah, I don't love them. If I was going to get a bike, I'd want the one from Case of Benjamin Button, where Brad Pitt looks hot. Yeah, you know those are sweet little. I don't know what he's on, like a Triumph or something. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, I'd ride it with one hand, like he does too, shades on. Yeah, Bomber and jacket. my number one is the Twenty Four Hour Le Mans. Well, okay. I I like this one because of the movie Ford versus Ferrari, <laughs> but also. I think it's cool that you do drive it in shifts, that you do it as a team, that it takes cars that are not just necessarily built, yes, they're built for racing, but also for road purpose that someone can get into themselves. They shouldn't drive it like they do because they'll probably crash and die. But um, it is a cool ass race that takes place. I like that it takes place over the course of a day. And I like yeah. that it, how you win it is you go the farthest, the fastest. So it's not just a set amount of time or just speed or anything like that. I mean, the, it's everything. Yeah. I mean, in the movie when the, the guy loses because he didn't start farther back, like such a stupid technicality. That's the dumbest thing. It's, but, it's uh, one of the, it's, you know what that is, dude? I'm sorry to say it's so French. Yeah. It's so French, dude. Yeah. Nothing against the French. You guys just don't know how to race. Yeah. Take but I mean, idea. doing, doing anything fully 100% for, for 24 hours is impossible and insane. True. Yeah. True. So true. Now, you need to sleep. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what's. I'm just saying your car. Like your car. Like. Oh, yeah. You drive your car an hour a day, two hours a day, maybe, even in LA. You're not going full speed that whole time or, no chance. or close to it. No chance. Your car would never last. Mm hmm. That's what I'm saying. This is a will. It's the will. It's yeah. it's the will of the machine, the will of the driver. It's it's endurance. It's yeah. huge. Um, it's not just a sprint. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm shocked that uh, a, a race I'd never heard of before today has has captured my imagination so hard, but I'm going to car number one. I mean, dude, you know what? It's funny. We're like totally reversed in that order, probably because I can't like tangibly capture it in my mind. But um, to me, being on a motorcycle is always cooler yeah. than a car. And these are dirt bike style. Dirt bike, exactly. So they're cooler. I loved, I love motocross. Yeah. When Jeremy McGrath was winning every year, mm-hmm. I was super stoked. Um, I like the idea of racing and also kind of flying. You for, catch air. Style, catch this is the air. This is the court. This is one of the things where you probably catch air. That's true. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's sick. And there's an endurance element to it. There's Big a, endurance element. The navigation element kind of, I would hate that. Yep. So I, that was a big detraction but, for me. I don't like having to use maps. Creates arguments. It would make an awesome doc. Like, I would watch a doc of this every year. It's funny. I was going to say it would make a great screenplay. I'm like, because Hidalgo, because yeah, it has the beats of it. And you know, there's like, you race for seven days and you do like, I don't know, 120 miles a day or something like that, or maybe 68, depending on what leg it is of the journey, right? Yeah, yeah. Or how rigorous it is. But then on the seventh day, you rest, and you know that's a bone scene in the movie. That's a bone scene in the movie. Yeah. 
where you bone like a lady who's, you know, the money behind the rival company, but you guys actually have this going and you're the racer who got pulled out of retirement. You don't really want to race, but you're yeah. racing for the up and coming team. We've only Those seen her guys. eyes to this point. She's had a veil over mm-hmm. her mouth for most of it because of the sand. And she comes into his like hotel room or tent. I imagine it's a tent yeah. at night. You do. They do say when you are racing into car rally, like when you're out there on the course, you do stay in like, um, tent camps i forget what the name is for it like when you make camp as an army or whatever uh-huh. but like you fucking just like nomads yeah yeah, yeah. exactly cool. so it's like camping you yeah. know i'm not a big camping guy i'm more of an indoors guy but yeah it would create a great yeah, screenplay she comes in takes off that veil it's like oh shit she's she's fully hot not just the eyes it's great. on yeah. and then you've got a great line already built in because he's been going for a ride and he says you want it's your turn to go for a ride and he just sits back, sits on his back because he's too, his hips are too tired from, you know, being on the bike that whole time. Yeah, he would 100% lock up during yeah, he, sex. Yep. And she's got to, and then she goes, no, 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 you got to, you got to step up and be a man, which is also some gamesmanship by her because mm-hmm. she kind of wants him to tire out because she does need him to lose. Yeah. But also she just might love him. Yeah. It's a beautiful script. Yeah. It is a beautiful thing. All right, that's the dank off. You have it. Aaron and I, you know, di- our list differs a little bit here, but that's okay. Just put your list in the comment section. Let me know. Get your ticket for the special April 1st. Um, it's going to be awesome. Two shows, one night. Stay stoked. Catch you guys in the next one. Friggin' late.